This tall, good-looking bird is called a wimbrel, and it's a fierce and determined predator, an expert at catching fiddler crabs. It has a long, curved bill that's just right for reaching deep into the muddy burrows where fiddler crabs live. It's a bill that's also sensitive and flexible enough that the wimbrel can rinse its dinner and then remove sharp legs and claws before it gulps it down. So there's a wimbrel, but our show is called Hope Returns. And that's because Hope is the name of a wimbrel like that one. Only Hope is a celebrity wimbrel because since the spring of 2009, she's been wearing a satellite transmitter on her back. And scientists have been able to use it to track her movements for more than 44,000 miles. And they're able to tell us that this spring, without a doubt, for sure, hope has returned here to these mudflats on the coast of Virginia. And they know for certain that she spent the winter on St. Croix, a tiny island in the Caribbean. Here's a picture of hope last winter. You can see the band on her leg, and if you look closely, you can see the antenna from her transmitter that beams her coordinates up to a satellite in space. And that's how scientists know that Hope left St. Croix on April 1st. She flew about 1,600 miles in 60 hours, and then came in for a landing here on the eastern shore of Virginia, like she's done every year since she was caught. It's very flat here on this coast, so there are lots of tidal wetlands and mudflats. Places that the tide covers twice a day. And when it falls, the water leaves behind a feast of plankton and diatoms, tiny animals and plants that feed millions, maybe even billions of fiddler crabs. They fork the tasty wet surface straight into their special mouths that scrape the food from the particles of mud. This bounty of fiddler crabs feeds a large proportion of North America's wimble population. Thousands stop here every spring because they can fatten up on the plentiful, nutritious fiddlers. Wimbrels are fast flyers who travel vast distances and they're very wary of humans. So they're hard to study and not much was known about them until tiny satellite transmitters were developed. In 2008, scientists from the Nature Conservancy and the Center for Conservation Biology began to catch a few wimbrels every spring here on the mudflats. Fletcher Smith talked to us about his work. When we actually are successful in capturing a wimbrel, it's usually a, a pretty big event. It's extremely hard to catch these birds. When we caught Hope in the spring of 2009, uh, it was immediately apparent that that bird was much bigger than any of the other birds we caught in that catch. Uh, I think we caught eight at that time. Uh, this bird just felt much, much bigger than all the other birds. And after doing measurements, it, it looked like that that bird was gonna be of the Western variety. It was so much bigger than all the other birds. And sending that bird off and, and having a pretty good idea that it was gonna fly to the Western population, that was, uh, that was a pretty big uh, event for all of us at the dock that day. For a long time, most scientists assumed that wimbrels who spent spring on the East Coast were members of the population that breeds around Hudson Bay. But not Hope. She kept going all the way to the western breeding grounds on the Arctic coast. Where wimbrels nest on the tundra and eat berries, lichens, insects, and even flowers. Hope's transmitter showed her on the move that fall. The last leg of her journey was more than 3,500 miles out over the ocean, and it took her a hundred hours. 
The next spring she was back on the eastern shore, and Barry Truitt of the Nature Conservancy got a picture of her. And then she was off to the Arctic again. That year her fall trip was a little bit more direct. In 2011 she stopped again for fiddler crabs and then migrated on to the Arctic. That fall she ran into tropical storm Gert and had to turn back to rest on Cape Cod. Then she made her way to the coast of Virginia to wait out Hurricane Irene before she flew on to the Caribbean. And now Hope has returned to Virginia. That's more than 44,000 miles, three round trips from the Arctic Ocean to the Caribbean. I'd be exhausted and broke if I traveled like that. But Wimbrels can do it all under their own power. Thank you, Hope, and thank you, scientists, for working hard to open this window for us. Now we see the Wimbrels who visit our mudflats every spring as amazing creatures, as the champion world travelers that they truly are. <laughs>